All right, now I have to actually think. Thinking, thinking, thinking. So. Have you ever ran so much that you thought your heart was gonna burst? Welcome to my world when I'm on a home visit with my family. If there's one thing kids love, it's to be chased. And the days of me pretending to lose in a foot race with my nieces and nephews are long gone. I'm huffing and puffing, they are just getting warmed up. That is why I endorse the butterfly chase. I point out the butterflies, they do the chasing. At one point, the thrill of the butterfly chase turned into an all out war. Maria, three years old, had the butterfly net and she puts it down for a moment. Benedict, four, sees a butterfly, grabs the net and runs. Catastrophe. Amidst shrieks of injustice, as both plead their case to their dad, my brother Carl decides this is a just right moment to teach some problem solving skills. Rising above the wailing with his calm voice, Carl says, Benedict, Maria, there's two butterfly nets and there's two of you. What's the solution? Ah, Will's Maria. He stole my net. Wow, ah, Will's Benedict. She wasn't using it. Carl is a seasoned dad, masterfully patient. He tries again. You guys, we can figure this out, okay? There are two butterfly nets. There are two of you. What's the solution? Ah! After about the fourth or the fifth attempt, Benedict finally screams out amidst between his sobs, I don't know what solution means. <laughs> oh, smiles my brother. But isn't Benedict's response just like our response every day when we worry? or when we sin, none of us want to be anxious or to sin. So is it not as if we don't know what the solution is to our worries, our sufferings, our fears, and our sins that stem from our fears? It's not only that, but it seems as if we don't even know what solution means, as if there's no chance of a solution to our problems. Is there a solution? Good news. In Matthew 6 verse 25, Jesus would not have commanded us to not worry if it were not possible. He says, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. In John, he says, do not let your hearts be troubled and love one another as I have loved you. He would not have told us to do this if we could not. Now, is it hard for us? No, for us, it's downright impossible. It is. But united to Jesus, the saints up and down the ages have proven that it is wondrously possible. Now, to ponder this, let's imagine that we are a mere potential, let's say 200 years ahead in our earthly, our eternal existence. Imagine that we are basking in the heaven that St. Paul describes as what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor has the heart of man conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. And as Father Peter Grover describes, imagine we are there and we're in love and joy and peace and we're saying to Jesus, if I had only known then in the world what I know now, I would have been so different. I wouldn't have worried about anything. I would have had such peace, joy. We can imagine Jesus could respond to something like this. I thought you knew. I thought you knew. It's why I came. It's why our Father prepared everything for generations and it was recorded. It's why I became man and fulfilled what was foretold and that too was recorded. It's why I established the church. It's why I gave you my body and blood. It's why I died, why I rose. I thought you knew. I thought you knew how loved you are, how safe you are. What is life when one possesses eternity? Everything has been for our eternal wedding feast together in heaven. This is the solution. Eternal love, eternal life is the solution. Now growing up, four sisters, four brothers, there was one thing our sisters, us sisters liked to buy. We never had to fight with our brothers over it. Wedding magazines. Together we could pour over these magazines for hours dreaming of our own weddings. This really shows you really clearly how God created us with this longing for the eternal wedding feast of heaven because earthly weddings pass away and our eternal one never will. And guys, I just reveal their longing for heaven in ways other than drooling over wedding dresses. Well, the day of my vows came September 10th in the holy year, the Jubilee year of mercy. And on that day, Archbishop Smith uh, in his homily said, those who have been touched by the love of the Lord know the power of its attraction and the desire it evokes within the heart to respond completely. 
these words emphasize that daily we are touched. We are filled with the love of the Lord. We worship love himself, God himself, in liturgical worship. We consume love himself in the, in the Holy Eucharist, the self-gift of God to us. We consume love himself in meditating upon the scriptures daily, the self-gift of God to us in the scriptures. And then we give love. We give love in our self-gift to others. Three boys who I've known for many years inspire me deeply with their complete response to the love of God. In 1596, the emperor in Japan wanted to try to stomp out the Catholic faith and he gathered together 23 men and three boys and he cut off one of each of their ears and he marched them 965 kilometers to be put to death at the end if they did not renounce their faith in Jesus Christ. The boys were Thomas Kazaki and Anthony Denon. They were 13. And little Louis Ibaraki, he was 12. Father Francis Blanco writes on the eve of the execution, we have little Louis with us and he has so much courage and he is so filled with joy that he astonishes us all. On February 5th, 1597, laying on the ground were 26 crosses, each fit to the size of each martyr, each constructed to fit each martyr. There was 4,000 people in the crowd and it is recorded that they saw the three boys running. Were they running away? No, they were running ahead to find the crosses that fit their small frames and they embraced those crosses. Little Thomas Kazaki wrote a letter to his mother which has been preserved and it shows the happiest reality we're talking about. It shows this eternal solution. An excerpt of which reads, Dear Mother, Dad and I are going to heaven. There we shall await you. Do not be discouraged even if all the priests are killed. Bear all sorrow for our Lord and know that you are now on the true road to heaven. Goodbye, Mother dear. Goodbye. Thomas, Anthony, Louis, believed in God's love. They were convinced the solution lived within them. They show us how to run to heaven. Father Matthew Hissel calls us walking heavens because of the Holy Trinity living within us through our baptism. Well, Anthony, Thomas, and Louis are running heavens, running to heaven. Run to your crosses, run to your crosses. Be like those boys, full of joy, full of faith, Live as if God loves you. There are three persons of the Holy Trinity, three persons of love living within you. There is one of you. What's the solution?